In 2016, we introduced you to this little guy, the American pika. It's a lagomorph, which means it's a member of the rabbit family, as well as being ridiculously cute. Pikas are also pretty easy to find in Oregon. It's not too far. Just a year before the Eagle Creek fire would change this area forever, Shankar Shavapa and these volunteers from Cascade Pika Watch only had to hike a few hundred yards up the Angel's Rest Trail to hear a pika call out. Did you see something, Rachel? Yeah. We usually hear the pika before we see them. This is typical pika habitat, up on the highest peaks, living in the rocks where it's snowy and cold. So what were they doing in the gorge? Pikas in the gorge may be one of the most accessible populations of pikas actually um, anywhere. Here we go, everybody. Dr. Johanna Varner has been studying this unique population of pika as part of a long-term research project on how they're impacted by climate change. He's under the rocks, but really close. Johanna's research suggested that these moss-covered talus slopes might be providing a sort of climate change refuge for the pikas that live here, just a few hundred feet above sea level. The fact that we find pikas in the Columbia River Gorge is actually really interesting because it does sort of upend the idea that pikas require long winters with extended snowpack. The moss is acting a little bit like a thick blanket of snow would up at high elevation. We're finding actually that the temperatures in the rock slide are very unusual. About a meter below the surface at this site, it stays a pretty cool and constant 45 degrees every day and every night throughout the summer. So even though it could be 90 degrees at the surface for us walking around, the pikas are actually experiencing a much cooler, more stable uh, microclimate and temperatures in this rock slide. Since cool temperatures seem to be the key to these pikas' survival, Johanna could only watch in distress as the Eagle Creek fire swept through the Columbia River Gorge in September of 2017. I think that I first saw information about the fire on Twitter, actually, and I was following the hashtag Eagle Creek Fire, and I just like sat all day hitting reload on the hashtag, looking for new maps of the fire progression and trying to figure out, like, are they burning my field sites and, and how are my pikas doing? And, you know, you can't spend that long in a place and not feel a real personal connection. All told, the Eagle Creek Fire burned some 47,000 acres and scorched much of the pika habitat Johanna had been studying for years. The fire burned nearly their entire distribution on the Oregon side of the Columbia Gorge. The fire also torched Johanna's research plans. I had plans to come out to check the occupancy status of my sites in the fall. And um, as a result of the fire, I wasn't able to access those sites. So it did result in a gap in data for the year. When we came back following the fire, the percent of sites that were occupied before the fire was something about 80%. In 2018, the year after the fire, it was closer to about 50%. So we definitely did see a decline in the percent of sites that were occupied. Uh, something While that might not sound surprising, what is remarkable is what didn't happen. Some temperature sensors that were out in the pika habitat were in place during the fire, and so um, they did record actually the temperatures in the talus during the fire. I also had sensors at the surface of the fire, and some of those sensors didn't fare so well. But the sensors that were down below the rocks were actually miraculously pretty intact. And surprisingly to me, the temperatures in the rock slide during the fire were actually quite cool and quite constant. They never got above about six to eight degrees Celsius, which is something like, you know, in the low 40s in, in Fahrenheit. And um, so that is still basically the temperature of a refrigerator, even while the fire was raging and, and exploding my sensors at the surface. And so some of these rock slides might be really quite deep and there might actually be year-round ice where the snow and ice sort of trickle down into the rocks. While 2018 surveys showed the pikas had disappeared from about half their normal sites, 2019 surveys showed some promise. We are seeing more pikas out there in 2019 than we did in 2018. About half of those sites that went from occupied to unoccupied have now been recolonized. Two years after the fire, pika colonies in the gorge seem to be rebounding 
And then Johanna's research hit another snag. The COVID pandemic has definitely been a second big setback in the research, um, largely because you know parts of the National Scenic Area are still closed off to the public. So out of an abundance of caution, the Oregon Zoo has um, put a pause on all of their volunteer programs, and that includes the Pika Watch. For Johanna, who now lives in Colorado, volunteers like Cascade Pika Watch are essential. To Pika Audio. On the bright side, it seems that overall the fire was pretty severe in some places, but not completely destroyed. And I think that there are a lot of parts of the gorge that actually the fire is going to uh, prove to be sort of stimulating of new vegetation for pikas. That's kind of a similar pattern to what we saw on Mount Hood in 2011 after the Dollar Lake fire in these sort of intermediate burn sites tended to actually have the highest abundance of pikas in two to three years following the fire. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we're probably going to lose another year of occupancy data. And so what that would have told us would have been, has the population really rebounded? Are they continuing to rebound? Or is it just sort of part of this annual fluctuation? And that's one of the questions that I'm not sure whether or not we'll be able to answer this year. But hopefully next year. <laughs>